Hello again and welcome. In today's video I'm going to be turning a trinket box and I'm going to be using as the opening and closing mechanism the new Procraft lock hinge. Now the Procraft lock hinge is a 100mm hinge and its unique feature is that when you open the lid it doesn't go all the way back down the 180 degrees to the surface. So if you wanted to put a finial or a longer handle on there as a bit of a feature, it's not going to fall back and possibly break that feature that you've lovingly created. I'm going to go through my method of fitting these, making them nice and snug and flush with the wood. And there is also a video by John Waitley, the owner of Procraft, and I'll put a link in the description below for that one as well. I'll go through the little things to watch out for. In my opinion, I'm going to be using um, a hardwood. It's olive ash. And in my view, a hardwood is better because you get crisper, cleaner mortises and crisper, cleaner tenons for fitting the ring. And what I've done, I've just done a 56 millimeter forstner bit um, and made a recess so that I can hold that into my uh, long nose cylinder jaws. And if you haven't got a, a um, forstner bit of that size or the size that you need to hold it to start working on the lid, then if you use a glue block, then you can do exactly the same as I'm doing now. So without further ado, let's get on turning this trinket box with the Procraft lock hinge. So I have the blank mounted in the chuck by means of the mortise created with the Forstner bit. Now as I've explained, the hinge is approximately 100mm. This blank is around 105mm, something like that. Give me a little bit to play with. First thing to do is to just true it up on the face and on the edge. So I'm just going to take my uh, half inch spindle gouge and we'll just face the front. That'll do. And then we'll just face the edge, just true up the edge as well. So the face and the edge is now relatively true. So what I need to do now is to take away wood. The whole idea of this now is to get this, we're going to be doing the lid first. So let's go back to the other camera. So the idea is to get this lid fitting nice and snugly. Now on the underside of the lid, as you can see, there is a recess and the idea is to take this down so that that fits on nice and snugly. And we can worry about the depth of that when we place it on, because don't forget we want it all nice and flush. So if I centralise that just very roughly, that'll just give me an idea of how much wood I need to take down and don't drop the hinge if you can help it. So we'll just make a, a mark there, just on here, just to give us an idea of where we need to be. It's not exact, but I can just take a little bit away. Now there are several ways of doing that. I'm going to use my half inch spindle gouge. You could go in from this way if you like, with a parting tool, up to you. I'm just going to take down a little bit at a time. Okay, now to get this diameter down here so that the hinge recess slips over there nicely, I'm going to be using the Simon Hope detail tool. It's a great little tool, it's got a round bar this end and it's sharpen the profile if you like, like a, part, like a parting tool and on the other end of the tool there is a skew which is great for various things and I use this a lot when I'm making boxes because it's ideal. So I'm going to bring this uh, diameter down now so that, and it's trial and error, so that we get a nice 
tight fit. Now with just a few very fine passes, rather take too little because once you've taken too much it's going to be too loose. Now that fits on there nice and snugly. Now what you've got to do is to check here that it, there is, it's tight here on that part but here there's a little gap so what we need to do is just reduce the size of that tenon very slightly, not right the way through, just just for the width of the inside of this lid and again it's trial and error now we've got just about I don't know half a mil maybe so I'll just take a tiny bit more I'm not worried about the inside at the moment I just want this to fit nice and snugly and nice and flush, which it does. That's brilliant. Okay, so we've got a nice flush fitting here and a nice... One thing I forgot to mention, and apologies for that, the width of the blank here was about 35 mil to start with. Um, just thought I'd mention that. Now the next step is we've got that fitting nice and snugly on there. Now make a pencil line on the inside of that rim and then that will tell you where you can start hollowing from. Now what you need to do here um, is my suggestion and also John Waitley from Procraft when you start to hollow there, you want that obviously to be flush to the body of the hinge. Go down straight, about a quarter of an inch, maybe three quarters to half an inch, so that you have a, um, a mortise in there before you start shaping the inside, so that you have a, an ability to expand your jaws or some other form of expansion so you can spin them around and finish off the top. So I know now that's where my extremity is so what I'm going to do again is to take my um, tool here from Simon Hope and just make a, a mark on that line. I'll just check now and see how that looks. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now I can actually just take away the pencil line and I'll be really flush to the inside of that hinge. Very, very gently, delicate cut. Okay, now that's taken it away and then that should be really which it is nice and flush to the inside of that hinge. Now there are several things to consider here now what you're wanting to do is to hollow this out obviously to how whatever shape you want. Um, now this part here is going to be your mounting point for securing it when you spin it around to finish off the top. Now as I say there are several, if you've got a set of jaws which are small enough that will fit in there in expansion mode then if you make that uh, recess deep at um, let's say half an inch or whatever and then do a 
a curve to the middle which gives you that point. Now I've got a, um, a small set of jaws here on my original Clubman 100. Now I am looking to use the actual jaws themselves here, the body of the jaw, because they're nice and round uh, to make a chucking point there and I won't leave any marks on the inside because it is virtually the same diameter, just slightly under that of that rim. So I finished the inside turning now and I've just had to make sure I go deep enough here so this part of the jaw doesn't actually foul the top here so I get a nice seat and that is fine. It's only going to be, I don't know, about a quarter of an inch but it's not a lot of um, pressure when you're doing the turning of the, of the lid on the top and that should give me more than enough security. So. What I'm going to do now is to just sand this up and put a finish on it and then we can spin it around and finish the top. So that's the inside of the box finished. I finished with the uh, sanding sealer, Yorkshire Grit and Hampshire Sheen, my usual finish. Now what I need to do now is to put another pencil mark and it's only going to be a mill or a fraction of a mill but it gives me an idea how far I can take the edge down so I'm flush with the other side of the ring. Now whether you go to these lengths is up to you completely. Um, I haven't got much to go there so I shan't be turning much of this away when I'm sanding etc. That should make it nice and flush. One further thing I need to do is to take the depth of the inside of the lid. Reason being, I need to know how far in that goes because I don't want to go through the lid and also I will be putting a 10 mil hole in to receive a finial. Now that, I can't go any lower than there. So I'll just make a line just to give me a guide. And there. So I know I've got this to play with. It's just going to be a very slight dome and in the middle a hole for the finial. So I've got my Jacobs chuck now, I've got a 10mm drill bit, I put some masking tape to the depth I can go, which is about 2 or 3 mils short of that line there, so I know that I can shape up to there. So just turn the lathe on very nicely, uh, very slowly, and just advance. So there, and then I'll be able to put my finial in there, <clears throat> and as long as I'm sloping up to that hole, I know I'm not going to go through the bottom. Okay, that's the lid finished, and 
I had a finial in my stock of finials and that will just fit in there and there's the lid. Okay so what I'll do is sand up the lid and then we'll be finished and then we have to do the bottom. So that's the lid finished with a sanding sealer, Yorkshire Grit and Hampshire Sheen. I've cut a little recess there where the finial goes just to take any excess glue that happens to come up. So what I've got to do now is stick on the finial and the hinge and then the top will be finished and we can proceed with the body of the box. Well, here's the lid all glued up, finial glued on and the hinge. Now whether you glue the hinge on at this stage before doing the bottom is up to you. You can leave it all until you've done all the turning. Um, I like to do this because it means I've got something to hold quite easily when I'm doing the mark in there. So there's absolutely no problem in doing that. So basically you've got the same process as before. I'm going to face off the front, face off the edge, get that nice and true. And then the object is to get the hinge on as flush as possible and hollow out the middle, remembering to have straight walls to give you an opportunity to turn it around, in this case, to finish off the bottom of the box. Okay. So that's the inside of the box finished now with again sanding sealer Yorkshire Grid Hampshire Sheen. I'll turn him round on the, um, on the other chuck now, finish off the bottom, sand and finish and then stick the hinge onto here. So that's the piece finished now, again sanding sealer Yorkshire Great Hampshire Sheen. Sailed a little bit close to the wind, a little bit thin here, but it's not about the box, it's about the hinge. And there are some imperfections in the wood as well, which I'm not very happy about, but there you go. Um, I'll glue the hinge to the base now, and then I'll show you the finished piece. So here's the finished box, um, great fun to turn. Great hinge as well. Uh, the feature, as I've explained, it won't open any further than that, 93 degrees, so it won't come into contact with the surface and break your finial off or your knob off on the top. Uh, the most important thing, I think, is to be careful. Many small cuts as opposed to one big cut. Don't take off too much wood. Get a nice snug fit and also you want everything as seamlessly joined as possible. It's important that the base is flush with that ring there because then the hinge at the back doesn't foul on the wood 
which it would do if it was proud. And uh, I'll put a link in the description below to Procraft's website and I hope you've enjoyed watching it and it gives you some idea of how you can use these hinges. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you very soon. Cheers now.